new commission being chosen to take over later this year. Is there a clear direction for the EU, though? I think there is a clear direction and I think that will be set more firmly in the process that we are now in the middle of. What was not uh, really catching the headlines the last few weeks has been that the heads of state and government did set strategic priorities for the Union in the, next, in the coming five years. And, and that's the important thing. A lot of the media is centred upon personalities, but there is a process underway concerning policies, because we do face major policy challenges in Europe in the years ahead. But you need to connect with the citizens, and now Italy has just taken over the rotating presidency mm -hmm. of the EU, and its Prime Minister Matteo Renzi is quoted in the press as saying he is fed up with the EU acting like an old, boring aunt and wants a Europe not only about rules but with a soul. So amongst your strategic priorities, have you got some soul? I hope we got some soul, but I'm more concerned with, uh, <laughs> with due respect to Italy, uh, I'm more concerned with delivering results. Uh, we can speak about souls and emotions and feelings, but I think what the citizens of Europe want is results coming out of European integration and European cooperation. Uh, we face major challenges. And uh, we know that the nation states are too small to master those challenges by themselves. Accordingly, we m must work together. Uh, but the workshop is not just the process and personalities and all of that. It is the ability to actually produce policies that affect the outcome of the lives of our nations and our citizens. So that's a fairly tall order. But, I mean, do you accept that this is really has been a very difficult time for the EU? Yeah. No, it the pro-EU parties do have a majority in the uh, parliament. Mm. But nevertheless, we saw a rise in the Eurosceptic and protest vote. And particularly in the UK, with UKIP, the UK Independence Party, and mm. in France, the National Front, to the extent that the Prime Minister there, Manuel Valls, said that the parliamentary election result was a shock and earthquake that all of Europe's leadership must respond to. Are they listening? Do they really acknowledge the scale of what happened? I, I hope that we all do. Uh, I, I think we need to acknowledge that national election results are often affected by national factors. I think the French election result can't be explained without looking at the national politics and the national problems of France, the same to a certain extent by the U in the UK. That being said, we are in a process where a lot of people are asking where are we heading, uh, what can Europe give, what have you done, and in, in addition to that, of course, we are in this sort of always somewhat messy process every five years of selecting the key personalities and setting up the European institutions. So we are in a somewhat difficult process, mm -hmm. that's obvious. So you've, you've heard that lesson when you, well, we I saw the heard. jump from 31 yeah. to 48 in Eurosceptic members of the European Parliament in this election from the last one in 09, that's accepted. Right. Although, although I think that if you look at, say, France, it is national reasons to a very large extent. That being said, an election, any election, any democratic election in any country, and certainly in the European Union, does send a message. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's important for the politicians to listen to that particular message. And I think the message is, we want a Europe that delivers results, results that are very relevant for us. So and that we must do. 